again to the channel today we are making a vintage cap collar shirt and in the channel we already have a package kind of collar shirt if you are interested in watching that one, I will leave the link in the description box of this video you may check it out and watch or in the comment section for that particular shirt this shirt is very beautiful and it's trending and very simple to make as well. So relax and watch to the end. Alright? Thank you so much. Please go ahead and give this video a like so that others can see it as well and watch to support the ministry. Thank you so much. And if you are new, go ahead and subscribe, turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified for more videos. Thank you and God bless you. So guys, I'm going to place my fabric on fold. So guys, I've placed my fabric on fold using my hip measurement because that's the biggest part. Hip measurement divided by 4 plus 8 inches allowance is fine. So I have my hip measurement is 10.75. So I have like 8 inches, 8 to 9 inches extra. So this is it. Then the length, the length of the shirt is going to be 26 inches for me. I'll be adding extra 1.5 inches. So the entire length will be 27.5. So for the back, I'll just add 2 inches allowance to my hip measurement. My hip 10.75 so have like this extra allowance for my ease allowance and sewing allowance so for the back the back is going to be three inches longer than the front so guys we have the back now and then we have the front but before we continue I want to appreciate every one of you we are at hundred thousand subscribers now and I say a very big thank you May God bless every one of you and increase you in whatever you are doing and send people to support you as well, even as you are supporting me in this channel. In Jesus' name, Amen. So guys, without wasting much time, I will cut the front part and I will use the front to trace the back part. It's as simple as that. So guys, the first thing I will be doing is to fold, I will measure 5 inches. 5 inches and fold from there. This is 5 inches. The next step is to mark out 1 inch here for button overlap. 1 inch for button overlap. I will measure this 1 inch all through down. So guys, this is my 1 inch for button overlap so our, all our measurement is going to start from this line not here take note please okay so this working with this material is not just easy but we have to do it at least for the sake of those that want to cut directly on their fa on the fabric so if you want to cut directly on the fabric just follow this step and pay attention so instead of pattern paper, we are cutting directly on the fabric. So I just hope you will see it though. So all our markings will start from this line. The first thing we are going to add is the shoulder measurement. My shoulder measurement is 16 divided by 2, 8. I'll be adding half inch there, 8.5. The next thing I'll be marking is the neck width. I'll mark 2.5 inches for the neck width. For a bigger person, you can mark 3 inches. So, after marking the neck width, the next step is to slope the shoulder by 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches is fine. Then I'll connect to the neck width as usual. <music> So then after that, the next step is to add my half inch, half inch for shoulder allowance. So the next step is to mark my armhole depth. My armhole depth is 8. Then I mark. To get 
get your armhole depth, just measure your round armhole and divide by 2. So I'll draw a straight line to connect the armhole depth. The next step is to draw my armhole curve. And to do that, I'll come to the armhole depth here and insert my bust circumference. That is my round bust measurement. My round bust measurement is 39. Divide by 4 is 9.75 I'll be adding extra 1 inch for ease extra 1 inch for ease remember we are not make this shirt is not going to have that so I'll add extra 1 inch for ease which is here and 1 inch for sewing allowance so I'm adding 2 inches extra so I'll draw my line like this For the armhole curve, I'll take the, I'll take the midpoint of the armhole depth, which is 4. 8 divided by 2, 4. And at that point, I'll come inward by half inch. Remember, this is the front. Half inch before, the, before I'll draw my curve. So this is my front armhole curve. And because I'm going to use the front to cut the back, I will add my back arm hole as well. So for the back arm hole, I will not come in by half inch. I will just make a curve. So guys, this is the back and then this is the front. When I'm cutting it, I will cut the back arm hole. Then later I will trim the front arm hole. It's as simple as that. I hope you are following. So guys, the next step is to take my vertical measurement. So my vertical measurement is measurement from shoulder downwards. From shoulder to my waist is 18 because we've already marked the bust. So there's no need for adding bust measurement again. 18 inches. Then I mark. So here at 18 inches, which is my waist, my vertical waist measurement, I'm going to insert my waist circumference. My waist circumference is 36. 36 divided by 4 is 9. 9 plus 1 inch for ease and 1 inch sewing allowance. So I'll add extra 2 inches here. Just like we did at the bust area. So the last thing I'll be adding is my hip measurement. Which I'm going to add at the length. The length of the top. Do you understand? So coming down to the length of the top. I'll add my hip measurement, which is 43, divided by 4, 10.75, plus extra 2 inches. So I'll connect my point. At this point, I'm going to curve it so that it will not be straight up. So to curve this part, I'll come up by 2 inches for my curve at the side of the shirt. 2 inches and I'll make a curve. I'll blend it like this. So this is it. We are done with the bodies. The next step is to add the neckline. So guys, for the neckline, I've already marked my neck width which is 2.5. What I'll add now is the neck depth. The neck depth for this shirt, I'll be making use of 3 inches. 3 inches. And I'll now make my cuff. The next step is to cut it out now. If you have not given the video a like, Please go ahead and give it a like before you forget. So I want to point out something. For this folding here, for this folding, you know we folded in 5 inches. If your material will not be enough, you can fold in 4 inches. So 4 inches and 5 inches is perfect for this type of color.
so this is the front part i'll pin it and then use it to cut the back shoulder because part of the back is going to fall back to the front and I want that to be one inch so one inch from the back is going to show at the front side and then I'll create the back neckline that is basically what we are going to do here take note of how I placed the front to the back I removed the one inch for button overlap very important don't place it equal if you do that you won't get the you won't get a good result do you understand so remove the button overlap before you place it just the same way i did my own so we are going to go ahead to modify the shoulder so the, the first thing i'm going to do is to remove one inch here and then i will replace that one inch with the back part so I'll measure one inch. So I'll cut it out now. I'll cut the one inch out. Can you see? So after cutting it out, the next thing is to measure 2.5 inches from there. So I'll measure 2.5 inches here and mark. I'll just follow the slanted shape to measure the 2.5 inches. So, this is what I have. So, can you see? So, the next step is to cut. So, after doing this, the next thing I'll be doing before cutting the back armhole, before cutting the back armhole, I'll fold this extra 2.5 inches to the front shoulder. I'll fold it like this. Take note, this one will overlap at this point. You know we added half inch for joining the shoulder. So let me mark the half inch for joining the front shoulder to the back shoulder. So I'll mark half inch. The back shoulder will now overlap at that point. So this half inch will serve as a guide. So remember we added 2.5 inches here. The half inch there, that half inch there is for the shoulder allowance. Just like we added half inch for the shoulder allowance for this front side. Do you understand? So I'm going to overlap the back shoulder to the front shoulder by half an inch. So it will overlap like this. Can you see? So I'm going to iron it flat. So we are going to check for the armhole depth to be sure that we have the same thing. So yes, this is 8 inches armhole depth. We are going to still confirm the shoulder. The shoulder is 8.5. I'll measure the shoulder 8.5 and yes this is 8 point this is 8.5 here so I'll cut the back armhole like this and then trace the bodies and cut the down parts now so I'll cut the back and hold. It's as simple as that. The next step is to cut the back neckline. I hope you are 
following. So to cut the back neckline, this is what how I will need to cut it, showing a circle shape. Do you understand? So I'll just follow that. Let me cut from here. I'll cut from here like this. Can you see what I have? So, yeah. The next thing I'll be doing is to I'll remove like half inch from here. I'll remove like this half inch. I'll just trim it off. Like this. neckline this is the front neckline i hope you understand so the next thing i'll be doing now is to notch this point it will serve as the center of the shoulder now so this notch will guide us so what i'll be doing now is to separate the front so that it will be two pieces yoke for this particular shirt so I will cut the back yoke now so guys to cut the back yoke I have these pieces here I'll place it at the back the measurement is 8 from here to here 8 inches so I'll just place it like this and trace the neckline and the armhole inches for hemming 12 inches so my ankle depth is 8 ankle depth 8 at that point I'm going to come down by 4 inches for my calf's height Can you see? So I have eight here. The next thing I'll be doing is to add one inch for ease. That one inch for ease I added during the cutting. I'll replace it here. And one inch for sewing allowance. So I'll make a curve just like an S shape. So my round sleeve is going to be 15. 15 divided by 2, 7.5. And 1 inch for sewing allowance. I'll connect from here to here. So to cut this line, I'll just fold the 2 inches. I'll fold it inside. 
pour cotton so that we don't run short of material. So we have our sleeve. The next thing I'll be doing is to trim the front part of the sleeve by half inch. This is the front part. Let me just notch it. So I'll use this to cut the second sleeve. So another thing I'll be doing is to notch the center here. To serve as a guide. This center will match. It will match with the center of the shoulder. That place I notch at the shoulder. So guys, we are through with the cutting. We are going to start the sewing now. So guys, the first thing I'll be doing for the sewing is to iron in half inch here. So that it will be easy for us to attach it. I'll iron in half inch here. So when I want to fix it, I'll just run a stitch down. So guys, the next thing I'll be doing is to attach a fusible interfacing to the overlap that's five inches I folded inward for the front side joining from the right side this is the right side and this is the right side so I'll join like this instead of joining from the wrong side as usual do you understand you are going to understand the reason why I'm joining from the right side instead of the wrong side so to join the two shoulders I'll shift this one I'll shift it and then I'll pin this is the two shoulders I'm going to pin it So I'm going to 
iron in my sewing allowance. With this material, you just have to iron so that it will be easy. show you how I'll fix it. Remember this notch? This is the center of the sleeve and this notch represents the, the front of the sleeve. The front of the, this is where I'll fix to the front shirt. That's what it means. So I'm going to pin it down. <music> We go ahead and weave every part of the shirt except the neckline. So we go ahead and weave it before you proceed. So, guys, the next step is to shape the sides of the shirt. So, this is the sleeve. I'm shaping from the sleeve. I'll just fold it into two like this. And yeah, join the side. I'll sew with one inch allowance. That's what we added. The next thing we are going to do is to cut the collar and fix it. So guys, to cut the collar, I'm going to measure the neckline. And the measurement is going to be from this notch here. This notch. Can you remember this notch? Where we folded the five inches. You understand? So this notch to the other notch here. We'll stop here. So we have 18 inches for the neckline. So we are going to cut the collar now. So after folding these pieces into two, the next thing I'll be doing is to fold into four. I'll fold it into four like this. Then the neckline, we measured 18 inches. I'm going to minus four inches from 18 inches. See the notch, the front notch. So from here to this point, it's going to be like two inches. So we are going to remove it. Two inches this side, two inches that side, making it four inches. So from 18 inches, we remove four to get... 14 inches so 14 divided by 2 will give us 7 from this point I'll measure 7 inches 7 inches this is 7 inches I'll be adding half inch for sewing allowance making it 7.5 hmm? 7.5 so the next thing I'm going to do is to take the wideness of the collar Towards this side, I'm going to measure 2 inches. The wideness is going to be 1.5 and half inch will be for sewing allowance. So I have 2 inches here. Then towards this center here, I'll be measuring 3 inches plus half inch sewing allowance 3.5. 3.5. Can you see? So I'll mark. So what I'm going to do next is to connect from here to here with a very slight curve. And to do that, I'll just take the midpoint of this neckline, 7.5 into 2, to give us 3.75, which is here. That's the center. So from that point, I'll measure 3.5 there. 
and from that point I'll connect to here so from here to that center will be a kind of straight and from that point to meet this point will be a curve another thing you can do is to come here this point this one is optional if you want to come here but you come outside by half inch half inch again half inch and from this half inch you connect straight up so you connect like this do you understand so that here will be will not be completely straight like I said this one is optional you can decide to stop it here you can decide to stop here that is straight line instead of slant line so feel free to do what you want interfacing on it so guys after attaching the interfacing we are going to sew the collar I'll sew with half inch sewing allowance on the two sides after that I'll turn to the right side so guys it's time to fix it to the neckline to fix it i'm going to take the center of the neckline so this is the center the center of the neckline i'll notch that point and I'll take the center of the collar and also notch that point. So I'll fix it from the right side. So I'll match it notch to notch. And I'm going to sew towards this side. So it will definitely stop somewhere here. So that from this notch to this notch we have two inches so i'll fix it and i'll be back so guys i fixed the collar and this is it can you see so from here from this notch to here it's about two inches so the next thing i'm going to do now is to turn i'm going to turn the neckline with this so what i'll simply do is to fold backwards to the wrong side I'll fold it like this like this and like this you understand so I'll pin it so I'll go and sew like this and stop here but when I, if I get to this point if I get to this point, I'll just fold it like this and stitch. You understand? So, the same thing to this other side. After turning, I went ahead and weaved the neckline. So, this is what I have. So, after turning this side, I also turned this side at the down part. So, what I will do now is to Turn. I'm going to turn this from here over and turn from here over. So this is what I have. down part so after turning see how this place is so I'm just going to fold follow along the fold like this I'll start from here I'll just stitch a bit from here 
and hem the down part. So after that, what I'll do next is to stitch the neckline. Top stitch on it. I'll top stitch on this neckline down to here. From somewhere here to somewhere here. Bye-bye.